Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. So we're out here picking these round zucchini this afternoon and I want to show you something I've noticed this year growing these. I've grown them before but it's been a while and uh, a little trick I've noticed when dealing with these guys. So you can see we've got a little bit in our bucket here. We've got the eight ball which is the darker one, the cue ball which is the light color one and then the uh, one ball which is the yellow one there. And the dark green ones, the eight ball aren't bad about this, but the yellow ones are, and then the light color ones, the cue ball are, especially can be bad about getting bruised up, especially when they're in the bucket here, you know, jostling around while you're picking or, you know, I'll take these inside, dump them in the sink and wash them. So they'll bruise up a little bit on you, which is not a big deal if just you're going to eat them. But um, if you're giving them somebody else or selling them, you might not want them all skin up. <clears throat> so a little trick I've noticed, so when you pick them, you know, unless you're cutting them with pruners, a piece of that stem is gonna come off with them. And that's what rolling around in this bucket here can really skin them up. If it's a long stem like that, or even one that's kind of partially broke off like that, can do some damage to these fruits here. So a little trick is when you're picking them, take your knife and kind of you could even cut it off closer than that trim that stem end off there and it'll keep them from getting skin up so bad in the bucket there while you're picking them and while you're washing them now regular zucchini aren't really bad about this but for some reason these round zucchini are a little more prone to being blemished so i kind of just lay them out on the grass here and then, uh, or I'll do it while I'm picking them, but I'll come in here with my knife. Show you. We'll just uh, kind of trim that off like that, make it flush, and they won't get near skin up. So give that a try if you're growing these round zucchini this year. It's getting to be that point in the season where it's kind of cleanup time. Not completely taking a break yet. You see, we still got some stuff growing, but things are slowing down a little bit. Here we got our half runner beans that we pulled up, and uh, had a decent crop of those. First time ever growing them, and uh, they did okay. The once it got hot, you know, the bloom started dropping. Pest pressure got bad. They started getting stung up a little bit. But I definitely grow them again. Um, did, did really well. Just, you know, planting them so late in the season, you can only expect so much. So we pulled those out of this plot right here. So got a little cleanup to do here. Not a lot of cleanup, but just a few big patches of crabgrass there. Got some T-posts out. Got to get the rest of these T-posts out. This rain we've had in the last few days has certainly helped making getting the T-posts out a little easier. And uh, got our canary melons over there. Still kind of keeping our fingers crossed for those guys. Maybe they'll just make a couple just so we can try those. But we're in the process of uh, cleaning out a lot of our vegetable crops. And then we'll be coming in with either flowers or cover crops to just kind of hold the place uh, until fall comes. till we start planting stuff for fall, more cool weather crops. You see over here our max pack cucumbers that we had along this line here on the outside. You can see them pulled up over there. They finally, finally started declining in production. Looking a little pitiful. So we ripped them up, got those out of here. I gotta get those T posts up and uh, get my wheel hoe. Clean this up a little bit here. For these areas where we're doing cover crops, <clears throat> We'll just uh, pull up our drip tape for planting flowers, like we're going to back over there where I just showed you. We'll probably leave that drip tape in there 
maybe go with some double rows of zinnias. So lots of things changing. Old stuff coming out, new stuff will be coming in soon. All this rain will ever stop so we can get in here and work some stuff. But you know, don't leave your garden to get grown up by weeds. Put something there. Put you a warm season cover crop. Put you some flowers there. Put something there so it stays in good shape because when fall comes around, man, that's one of the best times of year to be gardening when it's cooling off. Growing squash this time of year can be tough, especially if you start getting a lot of rain like we had. Your pest and disease pressure can uh, become extremely elevated. And we can see <clears throat> some um, disease pressure setting in on some of these squash in the middle here. A zucchini there, which are fairly disease resistant. The plants look good. But the leaves look good for the most part. We're getting some diseases on these guys. Now, I am getting some of this, which I've never really seen before here. I've never had any issues with vine borers. But I believe that's what caused that right there. And that plant there has had it. So, disease-resistant plants is one thing. No such thing as insect resistant plants and it's just been so wet we haven't been able to get out here and spray because the rain would just wash it right off that's gonna make it tough this time of year when your pressure is highest another thing to look at is this right here you see those holes in that zucchini there see all those kind of attempted holes where it's still kind of light and then there's one that has already made its entrance into the zucchini this right here is caused by pickle worms. And that's probably my worst, you know, in addition to squash bug, my worst pest for squash and cucumbers is pickle worms. And they get worse as the year goes on. I can control them pretty good earlier in the year. And then this time of year, you'll start seeing a lot of that. Now, the problem with pickle worms is once that worm gets inside that fruit there, you can't kill him. Now, we can come in here with some spinosad. We can spray these plants pretty regular. We can pick off, you know, pick off all our fruits young and we can manage the population, but it's hard to completely eliminate it. So you're gonna get some damage for spraying something like spinosad or BT. It's gonna help out a lot and, and frequent picking. You gotta get in here and pick these things pretty often because you don't want these things proliferating any more than they can. And if you see some of this, just throw it away, feed it to your chickens, whatever. Not a whole lot you can do about it when those worms get in there. But, you know, this time of year, you might need to start spraying twice a week, doing some stuff to just kind of hang on there. And if it gets to the point where the plants just look rough and every single fruit you got has pickle worms in it, it might be time to just hang it up. And we might see that time coming sooner than later here probably in the next few weeks or so we might see that happen we're just going to keep a close eye on it and we're not going to try to hang on to something that's just you know breeding pest and disease out here so keep an eye on your plants especially this time of year watch out with those pickle worms they can be controlled if you get them it's not all is lost but you got to be on top of them for sure it's always nice just to be able to walk out here to the garden Grab what you need when you want to cook something or can something. I got to pick a bunch of these tomatoes today. Put them underneath the barn there, let them finish and ripen up. And the ones I got on the table in there are ripe. And it's time for us to can some more tomatoes. We've done a bunch of just straight tomatoes. Today we're going to be doing some pasta sauce with some of these guys some of these bella roses and brickyards and red snappers all these pretty tomatoes we got growing out here and we got a bunch of good ingredients right here that we grew from the garden as well we got some pretty looking uh garlic in here we're gonna be putting in our pasta sauce we got some nice red onions that we grew earlier this year lots of nice bell peppers there and uh you know, this sauce we're going to make, there ain't going to be nothing in that sauce besides maybe a little salt and sugar 
that we didn't grow ourselves and and to me that is extremely satisfying it's been hot out here the last week and a half 95 degree days so these tomatoes are kind of on the way out still getting a little decent bit of production and um we sell a few of them but we grew this many just because this is the year of canning you know all that's going on in the world this is the year you need to be putting up plenty of vegetables and uh we're gonna do our best to make sure our pantry is full of these guys and we've been doing good keeping up with it so far and we're gonna try to keep plugging along making sure we can preserve the harvest and uh have all these good veggies whether it be by themselves or in combination in a pasta sauce all ready to eat all throughout the winter good stuff here i want to give y'all a little update on our sunflower plot kind of what we're calling our sunflower cover crop here and this 30 by 35 plot where we've got i think 11 rows of sunflowers planted i want to show you a couple different things we're doing here so we've got two different varieties planted these first four rows here are the joker sunflower nice um you know multicolored bloom on those and then these all these other rows over here these other seven the ones with the leaves kind of look a little darker you may can see there is a variety called chocolate cherry a variety we just added this year we planted these on a previous uh video on our youtube channel with a hoss garden cedar and we didn't measure anything off we just kind of eyeballed it about three feet apart or so you can see we got a really <clears throat> really good stand of sunflowers here coming up and uh that seed plate i used for the cedar the seed plate i made for these sunflowers planted them pretty pretty thick as you can see right here we look at those so those are planted pretty dadgum thick now they'll still grow out thick like that and i'm gonna leave three rows of them unthinned you can see these rows over here i came in here and thinned out those to probably one plant every three or four inches or so and with those jokers i did the same i thinned those out as well now, i'm pretty sure i know what's going to happen here because i planted them this thick before we'll still get good looking plants good looking blooms they'll just be kind of shorter almost look like kind of dwarf sunflowers they just won't get as tall but they'll pack in here and we'll still get some nice blooms and on these that we did thin out we'll get some taller height on those so i'm going to leave these three rows in the middle here we got four there that are thinned four over there that are thin we're going to leave these three thick rows in the middle so that when they do get up and blooming we can show you all the differences here and um We've been coming in here with the wheel hoe and just cultivating these lanes once a week, once every couple weeks. Got a few weeds, nut grass popping up in there just because it's been wet. We'll just keep this cultivated somewhat until these sunflowers get up big and start branching and they should shade out everything. But um, we can knock this out with the wheel hoe in about five minutes. No problems, kind of keep it under control until everything gets nice and big and tall. So we did a video on youtube a while back talking about how we were going to try and grow some of these melons later in the year than we would normally grow melons this here's a variety called halo and this is a canary melon which makes a kind of small bright yellow melon never grown these before but uh considering what we've been dealing with weather wise I'd say they're looking okay. We're actually starting to get some blooms on these guys. You can see in there. Starting to have some bloom action. Starting to get a little bee action out here. And uh, not sure how big these vines are going to get. They probably could use a little bit of fertilizer. I might come in here and just pour a little bit of dissolved mixture down beside each of these plants this afternoon maybe put a little bit more of that complete organic fertilizer down they look pretty nice and green it's just the leaves aren't as big as i would kind of expect them to be at this point maybe 
that's just these canary melons. Maybe the leaves don't get that big. I don't know. Anyway, we've been having to uh, spray them pretty regularly with liquid copper to prevent any fungal diseases. These are powdery mildew resistant, but um, you know we can get downy mildew this time of year. And so uh, amongst all the afternoon showers we've had, we've been trying to keep them sprayed, keep the diseases down so we can at least get some crop. This here was just a complete experiment. So if it fails, nothing lost. But at this point, it's looking pretty promising and look like, or it looks like, we may get a couple melons off here. So we'll see what happens. If any of you got any canary melon growing tips out there, I'd love to hear them. Tell me what I should be expecting and what I should be looking for here.